God is good. All the time. God is good. good. Amen. So, hey, let's play a little bit of scene. So before we start this first song, it's going to be Come As You Are. And uh, this week, I had one of those moments where I got a revelation that I never saw, and it made this song so much better. But in the parable of the prodigal son, right? You all know the story. Guy with two sons. Younger one comes to him and says, I want my inheritance. Father gives it to him. He goes off, and the NRSV version said he squandered it in dissolute living. And uh, his brother basically says he spent it all on wine, women, and song. But he ends up in a distant country with no money, and there's a famine in that country. And he finds himself, he gets, he gets a job from a citizen in that country feeding pigs. And he's out feeding the pigs, and he's <clears throat> looking at the pig food thinking, man, I'm so hungry. And NRSV says he came to himself and said, man, my father, at my father's house there are servants that have bread to spare. And he decides to go back and see his dad and apologize and repent for what he's done. I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. And my favorite part is he's coming back, and while he was still a far ways off, his dad comes running to him, wraps his arm around him, kisses him, gives him a robe and sandals for his feet, and they kill the fatted calf and they have a feast because his son was gone, but now he's found. But what I noticed was two things. First is while the son was so far off, he hadn't said he was sorry yet. He was just turned to his father, and his father came running to him. So you are never too far the other thing I realized is this guy was out feeding pigs with no money. And one of the first things his father does when he sees him is give him a robe and some shoes. So you can see this guy being dirty, covered in pig filth and pig food and mud, no shoes on his feet, and just covered in shame and sadness. And no matter where you are or what you're covered in, our God says, come, come as you are. And amen to that. So think about that as we sing, Come As You Are. And come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let the rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Let's just do it with the voices. So lay down your burdens. Lay down your shame. And all who are broken. Come as you are. There's hope for the hopeless and all those who stray. Come sit at the table and come taste the grace. There's rest for the weary, the rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can.
Let's stand and sing, build your kingdom here. In just a second. <laughs> Banjo time. Uh, hey, and don't forget, when we say in this song, we are the church, we don't go to church. We go to worship. We are the church. Amen? No pressure. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now.
Thank you. Good morning. It is good to see all of you here today. It is blessed Sunday morning, a wonderful time together in worship with our church family and also with those of you who are joining us online. We are grateful for you. Yes, you're turning around and wave to the camera. Welcome anybody who's worshiping with us online. We know there are people who are, and we're grateful for their presence as well. Uh, got a number of announcements. Uh, this week, worship night, uh, Wednesday night at 7 here in the worship center. Uh, leadership meeting next Monday at 7, and then you can see the other events that are coming up. I know uh, we're doing Dinner Church a little different. Now we ask you for somebody to sign up as a coordinator, and then you um, get people to help you with it. Anyway, there's a sheet on the back. We need somebody to sign up for the one on February the 1st. Uh, so that's coming up. And then uh, Heidi's got some special uh, service mission events she wants to tell us about. Good morning. So we have kind of a two-part mission event coming up that I'm very excited about. The bottom line of what we're doing is making Valentine's Day cards for the Texas Baptist Children's Home and their, their residents there. But how we're doing it is for those, um, uh, well, the first thing we're doing is getting together as a church after service next Sunday to start making these homemade cards for the kids. But then the following Sunday, we are going to be meeting at uh, the court at Round Rock, uh, which I think is an assisted living center, so that the seniors there have the opportunity to join with us in making cards for the kids. We did this before COVID, and one of the things that we were told is that the residents of senior living facilities sometimes really don't have an opportunity to participate in service events the way they did when they were younger and more mobile, um, and that really in bringing this to them, we are blessing them with the opportunity to bless others. So it'll be two-part. There is a sheet in the back that explains the details of where the court is and what to bring and all that kind of stuff. Um, but otherwise, just plan on sticking around next Sunday, and let's make some Valentine cards. Thank you. Alrighty. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. We are gathered in your house, O God, to celebrate the light. Jesus said, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We praise you, Lord Jesus, for illuminating our path and helping us master our fear of the dark. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to the Father in heaven. Spirit of God, empower our witness to the light in this service of worship and in our whole beings as people claimed by the light. Amen.
overflowing of true redemption An overflowing of your kingdom come We're ready for a real revival Oh Holy Spirit Turn 
into dancing You give beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory You're the only one who can You turn graves into gardens You turn bones into armies Turn seas into highways You're the only one who can You're the only one who can Oh, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing 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 better. Amen. All right, guess what? We're going to try something different. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Matt's very surprised. Oh, hey, sing. Okay. You don't have to play at all. <laughs> We're going to do a traditional song in a traditional way. Yeah. Andy's surprised too. All right, all right, I'll be honest. We're gonna attempt to do a traditional song in a traditional way. trust the sweetest flame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood supports me in the whelming when all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. No, don't do that. <laughs> Just tell me about the children to come forward for children's time. Where'd my magic mask go? Hello, everybody. Come on over. 
So how is everybody this morning? Pretty good? That's good. Oh, okay, did y'all hear that? They're planning new renovations for the cry room. The spirit moves, man. The spirit moves. It... <laughs> hey. Did you... Okay, did you get a permit for this wall? <laughs> and it's beautiful. So anyway, today I want to ask you a question. Okay? Have you ever been afraid? Raise your hand. Yeah, y'all, y'all can participate too. You ever been afraid? Yeah, we've all been afraid, right? So I want to look at, there's a Psalm of David, and it has a really pretty awesome thing. So <clears throat> it says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit and out of the mud and mire. Mire, right? So what words do you hear from David that say he might have been afraid? Slimy pit. That's what stuck out to me too. Bonnie? Mud, yeah. Hear my cry, right? That's I mean he's 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 in he's in some some trouble, right? Does anybody know what a mire is? I didn't either, I had to look it up. <laughs> mire is deep mud or slush. It's kind of like sinking sand, right? Hey, sinking sand. Hey, we're seeing where we're going now, huh? So the rest of the psalm, he says. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth and a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. So that one sounded different, right? He's not so much scared anymore. What, do you, what, what, what words in there did you hear that, that aren't scared? Feet on the rock, amen. That's a good one. It's a firm place to stand. See, if you're sinking in mud, it'd be good to have a nice firm rock under there you can stand on, right? Yeah. So, speaking of rocks, remember last week I gave you some rocks. I have more rocks. I know. Here, I'll give you this one, and then Jacqueline will get you a better one. I drew base clefts on here. But if you do it at wrong angle, it looks like a frowny face. You know the tiny one too? Hmm? You double note? Yes, you can get a double note. If I've got one, I know I've got one. Catch. Oh, right in the hand. Play for the Cowboys? What are you doing? All right. I give you the double note. What do you got? You got a single note? I think that's all I got. Here, I'll give you two. So check it out. So the reason I gave you this rock, remember, he just said he set my feet on a rock. He's talking about God. He saved him from the mud and mire and the slimy pit and gave him a rock to stand on. Yes, sir. That rock, you are right. That rock is not big enough. But Jesus is big enough. God is big enough. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is big enough to support you and no matter where you find yourself, no matter how slimy the pit, no matter how muddy the mire, our God is strong like a rock. Right? Hold on, wait. So I gave you the stone and there's a music note on it. Do you know why? Because sometimes singing is a really good way to remind ourselves that we stand on the rock, that we have Jesus and God on our side and their love for us. And sometimes David, when he got into trouble, he would write it down. He would write these psalms, which we call songs. And he would sing to remind himself, he set my feet on a rock. He gave me a first place to stand. All other ground is sinking sand, right? So I want to teach you part of this song, okay? On Christ the solid rock I stand. 
All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Let's do it again. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. So whenever you're afraid, you can sing songs like that to remind us that we are loved and we are saved and we are with our God. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, let's say a prayer real quick and then I will send you off with Miss Becca. Hey, there she is. All right, let's say, "Dear dear Lord, thank you so much for being our rock, our Redeemer, our light, and our love. On you, the solid rock, we stand. All other ground is sinking sand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, am I jumping ahead? No. Well, we have uh, quite a few joys and concerns today, which um, in itself, in a way, is a joy because it speaks to the confidence that we as a congregation have that we can bring our needs before the Lord. So we start off with a joy, and that is that Krista has tested no negative from COVID finally. Yay, because we definitely miss her here in worship. <laughs> Again, thanks to Adam and Ashley for not only painting, but installing our new church circle sign. Thank you very much. It looks very heavy. Um, I have a couple of prayer requests. I, um, I'm asking for prayers for my friend Don, who I have known uh, clear back from college, who had a stroke on Friday. Um, and also for the daughter of uh, a friend, Becky, um, her, who has eclampsia. In arranging, um, don't get confused, we're not going to San Gabriel, but in arranging for a place for us to go to do um, uh, the Valentine cards, it was uh, brought to my attention that San Gabriel uh, currently has residents with COVID. So please keep that in your prayers. And we should continue to have our hearts broken for the situation in the Ukraine and how that's impacting both the people of Ukraine and Russia. A prayer of thanksgiving for Mickey for being so awesome and gracious each week and cleaning the worship center and the Wendland house for us. Thank you, Mickey. <clears throat> Velma requests prayers um, for her friend, uh, Phil Dowdy, uh, who sadly had a heart attack. Uh, he is still in serious condition. Uh, she also asks for prayers uh, for her sister-in-law, Gracie Cargill, who's having issues with chemo. I'm sorry to hear that. That's so hard even when everything is going well. <clears throat> Gambler and I are requesting uh, prayers for the family and friends of Gambler's half-brother, Ray Parvin, who passed away this week. And as always, let's continue asking for prayers um, that our church is a beacon of God's light in our surrounding community. Please join me in prayer. Oh God, you are so big, so amazing, so awesome. And we come to you in thanks. Thanks that you provide us the opportunity to, to meet and to worship you. Thanks that when life is hard and we are frightened that we can come before you with prayers like the ones we just shared and those we carry in our heart. And know, Lord, that you are the solid rock we can stand on and that you will get us through, that you will be with us and those that we pray for, and that we are never alone. 
and that we can find joy in you. Lord, please let this not be just joy that we sing of uh, and rejoice together today in your church, but also what we carry out with us into the world, that people see your glory through our actions, that they see your light in us. Thank you, Lord, also for the prayer that you have given us that brings us hope and peace, and we will say it now together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You never stop, you never stop working. You 
never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Goodness, what a beautiful song. Today's scripture lesson is from Matthew 2, 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we have observed his star in the east and have come to play, sorry, to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel." Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay, pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in the east until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So today is actually the second Sunday after Epiphany. While we were last week renewing our covenant to live and serve as God's people, using John Wesley's beautiful words, as we were remembering our baptisms and dipping our hands in the precious gift of water, Epiphany came and went. But I don't think it's too late to back up a bit and look at this special day on the Christian calendar. I was hard-pressed to know which one to pick last week, so you're getting both two weeks in a row. Anyway, you see Epiphany, though. It's okay, because Epiphany is not only a particular day, January the 6th, but it is also a season, and it lasts from January the 6th through Fat Tuesday, the day before Ash Wednesday. And so we find ourselves in the season of revealing and light, and gift and giving and recognition that Jesus is not only fully human, but also fully divine. The main topic of Epiphany is Jesus' manifestation of himself as God. Epiphany takes its name from the Greek Epiphania, which denotes the visit of a God to earth. Reverend Alan Brim writes, During this time of year, we read stories from Jesus' life that show how Jesus revealed that he truly was the light that was coming into the darkness. That's why we celebrate Epiphany. It's a time to remind ourselves that in him a light has dawned 
that will never go out. A light of faith and hope and joy that shines in all kinds of darkness that can afflict this world. And so we turn to the stories, events in which Jesus' divinity shines through his humanity. And he is revealed as God incarnate. In fact, another meaning of epiphany is revealing, taking away, the taking away of the veil that covers something. The Magi are among the first to see that this is no ordinary baby to which the star has led them. A king is born, and not just a king for the Jews. This story in Matthew's gospel reveals that not only is Jesus worshipped by shepherds and angels, by commoners and royalty, but also, most, perhaps more importantly, Jesus is, rep is worshipped by Jews and Gentiles alike. These men were pagan Gentiles. In Jesus, God is doing something not only for the chosen ones, the Hebrew people, the nation of Israel, but God is also reaching out to everyone everywhere, inviting them to know wholeness and salvation and new life. They too are to be included in the kingdom of heaven. God throws open wide the doors. And truly welcomes all. We know these exotic people from the east are affected by having knelt at the feet of the Christ because they leave that encounter changed people. They never give a second thought to returning to Herod. He could never offer them anything greater than what they had found in this child. They go home a different way, by a different road. And we can assume they are quick to tell others of all they have seen and experienced because they too are different. They thought they were going to see a great and mighty king living amidst splendor and grandeur. Instead, they encounter something so different, so astonishing, so amazing that they themselves are changed by the encounter. Often when we hear Epiphany stories, we are led to focus on the gifts the Magi bring. Gold, frankincense, myrrh. And we wonder, like the little drummer boy, what gift can I bring? What do I have to offer? How can I adore this new king by sharing my gifts, graces, talents with the church and with all of God's people? But what if this year we go somewhere else, concentrate on something else, Yet another theme of epiphany is light. Elsa Cheney writes, Epiphany demands that, like these kings, we should return to our own countries a different way, carrying to all those we meet the light of Christ. During Advent, the world was in darkness, and we prayed and waited in the spirit of the Jewish nation, which lived in expectation of the coming light during thousands of years. At Christmas, light shone forth, but dimly seen only by a few around the crib, Mary, Joseph, the shepherds. But at Epiphany, the light burst forth to all nations, and the prophecy is fulfilled. The Gentiles shall walk in thy light, and kings in the brightness of their rising. We too are to be light in the darkness. You know, we seldom include it in our children's pageants when the wise men enter the stage. But before the Magi reach Jesus, they do what? They visit Herod, right? We don't often focus on this darkness in the story. But Matthew included it perhaps to remind us that the world was in darkness when Jesus arrived. And if we're honest, we have to admit that there is still darkness surrounding far too many these days. Darkness still abounds in our world, our lives, oppression, war, sex trafficking, drug addiction, poverty, famine, greed, power mongering, fear. You know, fear is a powerful thing. It led Herod and the scribes and Pharisees to conspire to kill this child Jesus. They feared this one they were hearing about. 
They feared that a new king would upset their apple carts, put an end to their greed and their selfishness. At this point in the story, they don't succeed in killing Jesus. But Herod does order the murder of baby boys in the area, what the church calls the Feast of Holy Innocence. Later, of course, the powers that be manage to let darkness overcome. They act on their fears and they kill the one who is the light of the world. Perhaps this season of epiphany, we can begin to conquer our fears and let our light shine. But it's scary to talk to others about my faith. You know, they might think I'm some kind of weirdo. What if I start giving away more of my material resources to those in need, to the church? Will there be enough left for me? But I don't know how to pray for others. What if I do it wrong? I'd like to invite people to church, but, but I'm shy. Ragnar acts of kindness sound intriguing, but, you know, I'm, I'm not a good listener. I'm not a good speaker. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. What if we ask God to give us courage and all the other things we need to do what God is calling us to do? What if we ask for courage to do what God is calling us to do? But you know what? Here's the really good news. If we don't manage to do all that God is calling us to do, even if we fail miserably, if we don't share the light of Christ, when we hoard or covet or cheat or betray, whatever, Emmanuel still bears the promise that God has truly seen who and what we are and loves us still forever through this life and into the next. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite the ushers to come forward for our morning offering. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you have gifted us with the greatest gift imaginable in your son, Jesus the Christ, that baby born in Bethlehem so many years ago, the baby the wise man came to see. We come like them bearing gifts, tokens of our appreciation and gratitude and love for your grace and mercy in our lives. Bless these gifts and those who bring them. Use them in this church that your light might shine in this community and beyond. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing Give Thanks. And give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ is Son. Call to discipleship this morning is amazing love. Let us remain standing as we join together in song. One, two,
my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. As you go forth this day, remember we are in the season of Epiphany. Go forth to let your light shine that others might know the light of Christ in a world of darkness that needs him so. In Jesus' name, go forth in peace. Amen. Don't forget to stop by the sign-up table on the way back. There's lots of fun stuff going on. <laughs>